Hello guys, how are you? The Code Tolik is here. We continue series on YouTube Framework and in this video we're gonna see how to work with request data. How to handle the request which is made with get, post, put or delete request method. How to take out the data and how to also handle properly request which is uh, made as a JSON, as a content type application JSON. In this channel I do coding tutorials and challenges and right now I'm in the middle of creating a course on E2 PHP framework from beginners to pro. So if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing because that means a lot for me. If you find this video useful, provide a nice comment, hit the like button and share it to your friends. Okay, let's start. And the very first thing I want to do, I want to create a new action. Action request. Okay, uh, in one of my previous videos, we saw how to get data from the request method, from the action, like ID. And we can print this ID. And when I make a request to this URL, site request, the ID is required parameter. And I need to pass this ID. If I don't want this ID to be a required parameter, I can assign something to it and it will be zero. But there are cases um, when I don't want the ID to be required parameter, but it's optional and I don't want also to have some default value for it. Okay. In this case, if I don't pass ID, it will be zero and uh, zero will be printed. But sometimes I just don't want uh, the ID and I want to check if ID is presented in the URL or not. So for this, uh, I need to directly access the request uh, component, singleton component, and get the data from it. So remember, we access all components with the eUp notation, request. And request basically provides a couple of methods, like get, for example. By the way, if you want to see all methods and properties which are supported by the request component, check out the following link which will be in the video description. And now I want to access ID parameter from the get, uh, from using the get method from the request and let's output the ID. Now nothing is outputted because it's just not presented. If I pass something in the ID, it will be presented. So this is basically equivalent of getting and accessing directly the super the super global object uh, uh, dollar sign underscore and get. Okay. So whenever uh, the ID is not presented in this dollar sign and um, underscore get the super global get, it will just simply throw an exception. Like this is okay. If I remove the ID, I see this notice error exception undefined index ID. So if I want to check if the ID exists in the super global, I need to check using is set. If ID is presented, then just output the ID. Otherwise, simply output null. If I want to assign this to ID, this is how I should do this. So, and it gives us possibility to pass their ID and if it's not presented then we can give some default value like 50 okay and this can be an ID simple if you want to get all the get data you need to uh, directly get the request get so everything basically just like this and if we dump this right now we can see it's an empty array. So if we pass like ID is 15 and name is John, then we see associative array. In the same manner, I can access post data, like so post, and I can print everything. So I'm going to make the post uh, request simulation using Postman, okay? So let's provide here URL, uh, localhost site request, and let's pass some post data. Let's go to the body, form data, and pass here ID is 15. And let's make a request. 
uh, we see some error. Let's go to the preview and here we see unable to verify your data submission. That's because of CSRF, cross-site request forgery. CSRF is a security tool to prevent submitting uh, data on your site from another site. CSRF should be uh, active on your website, but we can obviously disable it for particular actions or even, even globally. By the way, I don't recommend to disable CSRF if you, if you really don't need it. And to know more about CSRF, just check out the following link from the official documentation. Let's go to our controller and disable CSRF right now globally. Enable CSRF validation. I'm going to set it to false. So this basically will disable the CSRF validation for site controllers for every action. If I want to disable this for one particular action, I need to uh, override before action event and I check if the action ID is request, then enable CSRF validation equals false. And this will just simply disable for my request action. If I want to disable it globally, I need to configure the request component. Uh, okay, so let's make a request. Uh, and here, here it is. So we see the post data ID corresponds to 15. Let's pass name also, which will be John. Let's send the data. And here we see uh, name also. So in the same manner, um, I can pass here the name. And if the name is not presented, I want to make it the code holic. Okay. And let's just make a request. It will, the name will be John. Now I just don't pass the name anymore and the name will be codeholic. As I said, request gives us possibility to, um, to use a couple of uh, really useful methods, like to check if the request is get or post, is get, is post, is Ajax and so on. So it basically gives a, a lot of Boolean variables and methods, which, um, which just return true or false predicate methods. Request component also gives us possibility to access a different parts of the URL, like host info, for example. And let me just directly output this. And we can see when we make requests using Postman, this is the host info. And in the same approach, we can get like uh, path info, which basically gives us uh, the rest of the URLs site and requests. If you want to see all the properties which are supported by the request component uh, regarding the URL, you can check out the following link, which will be also in the video description. We have possibility to get the URL, which will be without host and without IP. We have possibility to get absolute URL, which will be with host or IP, host info, path info, query string, and so on. Let's see how to handle the data which are made using put or patch or delete uh, request method. Let me change this into put and just make request like this. And let's go to the controller. And in this case, we cannot just uh, access the um, get or post because the request is neither get nor post. So we need to um, access the data in a different way. We don't have this put, uh, put method which returns all uh, put data, okay? So we need to do it differently. For this, uh, the framework gives us body params or get body params uh, method. And let's just dump this right now and see the result. So here is body params and it's really strange. So it has this long key and then we have here uh, ID 15 and so on. So it's a little bit strange. Okay. So let's, let's activate by the way, this name also. And here it is. So in order to handle this properly, uh, we need to send it in a different way, like form, not form data. Let's send it, uh, as in JSON. Okay. So let's do it. Um, ID corresponds to 15 and the name is John. Okay, so let's make a request to this and it's not good yet simply because we need to specify that we are sending JSON. Let's go to the headers and for content type, 
we need to specify application JSON. But even this won't be enough. We need to configure our uh, our request component to handle the uh, content type application JSON properly. Let's see the result. Nothing happens. Let's go to the config file. And here we have this request component. And let's configure it. Let's specify parsers here, which will be an associative array. And for application slash JSON content type, we need to use the following class e web json parser uh, colon colon class okay so this is the class i want to use to parse application json content type and let's make request once again and here i see associative array of the json i sent okay so this is how you should take out the data in the same way we can pass here uh, delete request uh, and pass the data Obviously, you can still access the query parameters like ID corresponds to eight, and let's just see in the in the code. So I can take out this ID right here and print it. Let me just dump it. It's simple. ID. Let's see. So here I see the ID eight and the delete request data so basically these are body params if i want i can also access these query parameters using request get method like for example in the following way so let me remove this id a parameter from the action and just print everything which comes with the get okay so let's go to the postman make a request and here i see an associative error which is get data so if i pass something here name is uh james here it will be so e uh, the request component basically gives us also possibility to uh, get the current user agent which browser the user has uh, get the uh, headers all headers or specific header get the user ip and much much more so let's see a couple of them um, let me let me do like this so i'm going to take out the request and save in the following variable and access it directly like um, let's dump the request user user agent okay so let's send it and this is the user agent so if we make a request in the browser here is the uh, user agent of my browser so let's get all headers Here are all headers. So, and you can also access the current user IP. So, this is my IP, which is local IP. And the current user host, which is now. One side note when we're about to get the user IP. So, if your application is running behind some proxy, the user IP basically doesn't work in this way. So it's a little bit advanced topic, but you need to configure your headers so that the user IP is saved in another in another header. Okay. By default, the user IP is saved in the in the following header of the super global server. So it's uh, saved in the remote header uh, header. But if your application again runs behind some proxy server, the remote address is the basically proxy IP, not the user IP. And in this case, the um, IP will be in a different header and you need to configure your request component to read also from this header. Okay, that's it guys for this video. Thanks for watching. Again, if you like the video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and share this video to your friends. Also, let me know in the comment section what you think about my videos. Thanks again and see you in the next time.